In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can make the entrance to your module site a little bit more exciting and a little bit more useful to your students as well. So there are two approaches that we'll look at in this particular video. The first one is sticky announcements. So you can see here I've got edit mode on at the very top and I've got my announcement at the top here which uh, actually has a, a banner which is relevant to the topic I'm teaching and I have uh, actually I've decided to put in my name and the aim and learning outcomes of the module. Now you can actually put whatever you like in here. You could put in for example the structure of the module. The key though is not to put too much in here because you don't want it to take up the entire height of the page um, because for this announcements page the main thing is the announcements. It's going to be the, what's latest and what's the most recent thing that's getting churned up in the module. So you don't want to make a, a post that spans the entire height of a web browser. So this particular post is quite short and I could in fact link out perhaps to uh, more detailed information if I wanted to or suggest people look at other parts of the VLE site. But this particular post, it gives a context to the module, so that every time the students are visiting the site, they're reminded actually why they're doing it, what, uh, what the intended outcomes are at the end of the module. So it brings a little bit more context to actually uh, the module as a whole. So what I'm going to do now is actually delete this post and I'm going to recreate it for you so you get a sense of how you can do this yourself. And I'm going to show you how you can make it into a sticky post so it always stays at the very top of your announcements page. So first of all, I'm just going to delete this old post and I've actually got that text stored elsewhere. But uh, if you're doing this yourself, make sure you've got some text to hand or you'll type it in by your hand. Uh, I'm going to create my announcement using the button as per usual. The title for this particular announcement should be the uh, module title. And now in this box here, this is the announcement text. First thing I need to do is add the banner image. Now you can actually add a sequence of banner images if you wanted to. You can have sm three small ones. Um, but this example here, I've just got one image and it's going to be a, a small image that goes across the whole width of the announcement. Use the icon there, insert edit image from the toolbar. If you don't have that on your toolbar, just click the arrows. Uh, sometimes you might have a toolbar that looks like this. You need to click the arrows on the right to expand your toolbar. But click the insert image icon and you get a pop-up window that looks a bit like this. On this pop-up window, I'm going to browse my computer for my banner and there we see that's the banner I'm going to upload. Now this banner has actually got text inside it. If I was a screen reader user, a visually impaired user, and I wasn't able to see this image, my screen reading software would not be able to tell me what that text says. So it's really important that if you've got text on your banner, fill in the image description with that exact text. Now in the appearance tab, I want to remove the dimensions that are set. The reason why I'm going to do this is because I want this image to span 100%. So remove these dimensions, just empty up all the boxes. And now you type in a little bit of code. Now this isn't technical, this is very quite, quite straightforward really. Uh, you just type in width, colon, 100%, semicolon. Okay, width, colon, 100%, semicolon. That's all you need to do. That's your first bit of code. And you click insert. And then you can see here that the image stretches across the whole of the announcement. It's 100% wide. Now uh, I want to add in some text down the bottom here. Um, you just spot the cursor will be on either side of the image. So just move it to the end and then hit enter and you're onto a new line. So on this page, I actually want to put my name and the learning outcomes from the module. So I've got those in a notepad document pre-prepared. I'm just going to use some keyboard shortcuts here to copy and paste this in. This is slightly more reliable than using some of the buttons. So Control A selects everything. Control C copies it. When I go back to my announcement, put the cursor in the box, just click once and then press Control V. And you see there, there, there goes the text inside. If you're copying in from Word, you will need to select the text and the text only, don't select the image, and then use the remove formatting 
icon in the toolbar. That will strip out all of word styles and formatting. This is good because when it goes on to the VLE, it can make it look a mess unless you do that. So either copy from Notepad or use the Remove Formatting button if you're copying from Word. So you can see here my um, my announcement is actually a little bit spaced out at the moment. So we need to just get rid of some of these extra lines. And then this final section, I want to be bulleted. So I'm just going to select that, click the bullets link, and there we are. Final step for me, I just want to bolden these subtitles. There we are. And that's me done. I'm happy with that as my introductory post. Uh, that's going to stay sticky. So uh, no date restriction on that. And then I'm going to click Submit. Now, if you are creating these sorts of announcements, you will need to do this before the site goes live. If you create it after the site goes live, then that announcement will actually get emailed out to the students. And this is just an introductory post. It's not a proper announcement. It doesn't need to be emailed out. So I'm going to move this uh, announcement up on the announcements panel. You just hover over the left hand side and use the mouse to drag it up and down. And you'll have spotted uh, somewhere on this page, it normally sits at the top actually, um, it says new announcements appear below this line. So what we're going to do is move that bar so that it appears directly underneath our introductory post. And that means that any announcements, sort of reminder announcements or notifications that new uh, resources have been made available will appear below it. And that's what makes this bit sticky by having it above that line. So just turning edit mode off, this will give you a sense of what the students will see. Students will come to this site and the first thing they will see is my introductory sticky post and then all the other announcements will appear below it. So that's the first way you can uh, make your entry to your VLE site a little bit more interesting, a bit more relevant. The second way is a page that looks a bit like this. You can actually create a page which has no items on it at all. It's just one big editable page. And I'll show you how you can now create this page and then make it the first page that appears when people go into your Feely site. So the first step is to switch edit mode to be on. And then on the left menu, click the plus icon and then blank page. We need to give this a title. I would normally use the title for the module to actually go into there and I'm going to make that available to users. This now, now needs to be dragged from the left menu up to the very top because this is going to be the first page that we look at. So that's one step. There is another step which I'll come to at the end. But move that to the very top of your list. OK, now you'll get an editor you'll see here which allows you to change the blank page. So once again, I'm going to add my image, add in my image description, change the appearance tab, getting rid of all the dimensions and adding width colon 100% semicolon. Spans the whole width then. And once again, I'm going to paste in my content. And you can use tables or you can use whatever you like on this page. Um, it's completely flexible. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to use proper heading structures here because I've got the space to uh, the height to do what I like with it. Proper heading structures are again really useful for students using assistive technologies like screen readers because they provide uh, structures to the page behind the scenes that students can use to navigate through. So I've got module outlining as a, as a title. I'm going to change that to be heading. I'm going to change module leader to be subheading one. Aim of this module to be subheading one. And learning outcomes to be subheading one. That's just the level of the heading. That's done. Click Submit. And what it will do now is it will turn edit mode off automatically so you can see what the students will see. And you see that that will be a nice page for them to land on. And again, it could be a lot more interesting with a better picture at the top and 
perhaps using a, a table here outlining how the module is going to run or whatever. So that's your blank page. Now there's one final step if you want to make that the first page that you see when you go into the VLE site. You have to go to customization. There's just one final step you need to do to make this the first page you see when you enter the VLE site. From the course management control panel area of the uh, left menu, select customization and then select teaching style. At the very top of the teaching style settings is an entry point setting and you need to change that to be whatever page you want to be the first page to enter. And this will be blank page demo in this case. Click submit and there we are. Next time someone enters the VLE site, they'll be taken to that page. There is a risk though, because the announcements don't automatically appear when you go into the VLE site, that means they might be missed. They do get emailed out and they do appear on the SPSW tab, uh, but you'll want to make students aware of this. So in the first session of your module, make sure you point out that the announcements page is situated on the second page rather than uh, as soon as they log in. And they should check the announcements regularly uh, for any updates to the site. The final note of caution is copyright. You're not allowed to use images that you have obtained off the internet that are copyrighted. This includes Google Images. When you do a Google image search, it will produce stuff that is copyrighted. You cannot use that. There are a couple of sites that you can use that provide free images. Uh, one of these is Flickr, but you have to go to Flickr's Creative Commons search. And that is a type of license which allows you to use the images as long as you attribute who made the image in the first place. Flickr.com forward slash Creative Commons. Another place is called Morg File. It sounds morbid, but it's a, it's a good free image site. So morgfile.com. You can get your images from there. And finally, you can use images off the university website as well. So I hope that's uh, useful for you. Do let me know if you want any help with that.